why do you keep losing to players that you're better than? That's what I'm gonna be answering and helping you with in this video. And what I'm gonna to explain to you is gonna be really important if you want to improve your game and you want to become a better player. Now, in order for me to help you, I need to be very honest with you and explain the way things work. So the first thing we need to kind of figure out is if in fact you are losing to players that you're better than. Now the way that you want to think about this is the score lines that are going on. If you play against someone on a regular basis and they win sometimes and you win sometimes and then they win, maybe they win two in a row and then you win one, stuff like that, then you're about the same level as that person. If you play against someone and they beat you every single time, so even if they're beating you 7-6 in the third set every time, or it's real close scores every time, but they win every time, they are a better player than you. Even if you feel like you're as good as them, or better than them, you're not. If they're beating you every time, they're a better player. If you're playing against a person or people, and you're losing by score lines, kind of 6-2, 6-3, 6-4 in every set, you're not getting to tie breaks or anything like that, they're the scores that you're consistently kind of coming up against, then those people are probably a level above you. If you are playing and you're losing matches 6-0, 6-1, you know, first set 6-love, second set 6-1, maybe 6-2, occasionally you get in a couple of games in a set, the people that you're playing against are at least two levels above you. The score line in tennis can be very deceiving. So even if you feel like you're coming close, if you're losing 6-1, 6-1, a lot of games are going to juice, and that sort of thing is happening on a regular basis, really important for you to understand that those people are at least two levels above you. Now the reason I'm explaining this is because a lot of tennis players get a little bit deluded about their, their current level of ability and current level of performance. They're basing their perceptions either off what they want to be able to do, or they're basing it off their best shot. Like if you play a match, you lose 0-0 to someone, but you keep on going for big forehands, you're going to make one, two, three, four, five great shots, awesome winners, everything felt right, everything was amazing. But what you've got to understand is that that isn't the level that you play at. Those shots were, were basically lucky shots where everything came together, so you hit this amazing winner. That isn't your level of tennis. Your level of tennis is what you're able to do on a consistent basis. So if you're you know, getting to juices regularly, but you're still losing those games, and you're losing matches, six love, six one, six two, in both sets on a consistent basis, that's your level of tennis. And that's the, the first thing that you need to understand if you want to become a better player. If you go through your matches, go through your tournaments constantly, go, no, no, I, I should have won that. I'm a better player than that guy. They were just floating it back, or that girl. They were just hitting me moon balls. They were just giving me easy shots. I'm, I'm, they're just junk balling me. That's the reason I lost. If you've got that mindset and that mentality, you're never going to become a better player because you're not going to face what's going on with your own game and you're not likely to put the work in that it takes to become a better player. So the first thing is to kind of look at the score lines that are going on in your current matches and really be honest with yourself about your ability level. And it's okay, we've all been there. I cannot tell you how many times I've had my backside kicked in tennis matches. I am firmly aware of my level. There is a lot of players that I can beat there's also a lot of players that beat me and that's okay because understanding where I'm at at this moment allows me to work on the right thing, the relevant thing in order to become a better player and that's exactly what you need to do. Now when it comes to improving, I want to give you a framework to think about this because a lot of people don't look at it in the right way and part of the reason that they don't look at it in the right way is because there's so many YouTube videos saying hit the ball like Federer in three simple steps, hit the ball like Djokovic in three simple steps you've most likely watched those videos, you've most likely tried them many times, and you've found out that tennis is not as simple as three steps or five steps or different checkpoints. So what you need to do is you need to kind of think about things in a certain way. There's no perfect technique. It is all about getting to the ball and then controlling the ball so it goes back down the other end of the court. So the first thing that any tennis player can do to become a better player, and I mean like a, a properly better player, is to be able to get to more balls. The next thing that's going to be important is your ability to control the ball when you get there. So coordination, your ability to control the angle of the racket head. 
practicing technique and working on that side of things can be important, but you can only do those things up until you kind of, you run into a wall, which is your ability level. So the framework that I want you to think about for improving your game is you need to see like a better player in order to play like a better player. So everything you do on court is based on your visual system, reactions, anticipation, when you do your split step, moving to the ball, the way that you prepare, your positioning, your spacing from the ball, the timing of your shot, watching the ball onto the strings, that's all based on how your visual system is functioning. So in order to become a better player, you need to kind of work on your visual system and improve it and that is kind of one of the biggest things that every player can work on to become better. The next thing is you can improve your movement. So movement can mean different things for different people. It might be speed so you can get to more balls. Like I said, that's going to be important for being better. It might be flexibility. You know, it's one of the big things that I've had to work on. You watch the pro players play. They're amazingly flexible and that allows them to use certain techniques. Well, I had to do a lot of work on my flexibility in order to have a more modern style of game because I just wasn't flexible enough. So in terms of your movement, you might need to work on your flexibility. Maybe you need to work on strength. Maybe you, you need a better low volley or you need to do better on wide balls. And the reason that you can't do that is because you're not strong enough in those positions. So it could mean that in terms of movement. But for most people, movement is coordination. Like I said a moment ago, your ability or the thing that matters most on court is getting to the ball and then being able to control it, being able to control the angle of the racket face. And that comes down to coordination, hand-to-eye coordination. So step one, visual function, the better your visual system works, the better you'll be at tennis. Step two is coordination, movement, but the more coordinated you are, the better you'll be at tennis. And step three, is you've got to think like a higher level tennis player. So when it comes to thinking, we can think mental toughness, we can think about focus and concentration. You know, most points that you lose are gonna be because you try and go for the wrong shot and because you, you know, maybe lose focus, you don't watch the ball into the strings, you lift your head or whatever, and you miss that shot. Potentially, you might have negative self-talk. There's a lot of potential things that could be going on, but if you improve your kind of mental toughness and the way that you think, your focus and things like that, that's really the next thing that you can do to become a better player. So if you are losing to a certain type of player on a regular basis, you've got to understand that they are a better player than you. So you need to address the things that you need to address to become a better player so then that you can beat them. You need to see better, you need to move better, and you need to think better. And it's a gradual process. If you're losing 6-1, 6-1 to someone, you are not going to be realistically you're not going to be beating that person in a month's time in two months time maybe even three months time if i think about some of the guys that i try and beat there was three targets that i had i've been able to beat two of them one of them i still haven't been able to beat him it's taken me three years he used to he used to destroy me like six love six one six one six one if you watch us warm up we look like a similar level of player but then when it comes into a match we are not a similar level of player because that's what the scoreline reflects. Now, a couple of years later, I've really been working on correcting some of the things that I've just talked about. Now the sets are like 6-3, 6-4 on a consistent basis. So it's taken me two years of hard work to not be able to beat someone. But before, he was at least a couple of levels above me. Now, he's just one solid level above me. So the reason that I'm explaining this is to give you reasonable expectations about what it actually takes to really get better at tennis. Now, there are a couple of things that you can start to work on right away. The first one is to go for less shots that you can't hit during a match. Like the, the most simple way to win more points is to stop going for stupid shots that you've proven that you can't make. The second thing is really to absolutely double down on watching the ball onto your strings. Most errors come from lifting the head, losing focus, not watching the ball onto the strings. So in addition to not going for too many shots, the next thing that you can do is really watch the ball onto the strings as hard as you can. And then the third thing is start to work on some of the stuff that I've talked about. Vision, coordination, movement, that kind of thing. To help you with that, I've got a couple of resources. I've got a free tennis vision starter program. It's gonna show you six different drills that you can work on that's really gonna help with your vision and that's gonna make a big difference. There's a link down below that's gonna allow you to grab hold of that. 
But the second thing I've got for you is a full web training. This was a class that I did live. I've recorded it for you where I'm going to take you through a series of assessments for your visual system, for your coordination, so we can start to figure out exactly what you need to do to become a better player. So there's a link down in the description that's also going to allow you to grab hold of that. I hope you have found this video to be useful. I hope you've got a lot out of it and really take it in the way that it's intended. When I make these videos, I know they're very different to a lot of the videos that are out there because a lot of people are just teaching you about technique and tactics and that kind of thing. That stuff is all important. But tennis is a complicated game. It's frustrating, it's hard, there's a lot that goes into it, and a lot of players just simply don't have the capabilities of playing at the level that they think they should be able to, or the level that they want to. And that is stuff that you can change, but you've got to work on changing it. So I make these videos to try and help you to try and understand what you really might need to do, rather than kind of pretending that, yeah, if you just go out and practice this thing over and over again, you'll get better. Because what normally happens, if you try and do something over and over again that your body's not capable of doing, most players get injured. So my goal is to give you information that you can use to get better and hopefully not get injured so you can keep playing, keep on improving your game. So hope you found this video helpful. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you've got any questions or comments, leave them down below. And uh, I hope you get that vision program and I even more hope that I see you on that training.